Hey guys, welcome back. I am Michael McCarville. This is Fun with Fallen Flags, and we are up to episode 34. So we're going to go through a Rio Grande Southern caboose kit build, and it is Model Railroad General Store MRGS number 400 is the kit number. It's Rio Grande Southern Long Caboose number 0404 in HON3. So I've got this. Had this for a little bit and wanted to build it. And um, I have some Blackstone caboose, cabis, <laughs> and they're uh, they're great looking. But I wanted a Rio Grande Southern uh, counterpart as well. So this is a plastic styrene kit, and they recommend that you use um, super glue, a uh, ACC cement or epoxy but primarily liquid plastic solvent. They list a couple of different kinds on here. So um, I'm just using regular um, cement, plastic cement. Um, but they also list a bunch of other things that would be a good idea. Small pin vise, exacto, block of wood or metal, um, scraps of styrene or cardboard sheet. I mean, all the type, basic type of stuff that you would do. Uh, if you haven't seen episode 29 I go through a really basic kit build for that where uh, we're not going to talk about some of the details um, like flashing and cleaning up and washing the, the plastic and things like that so anyway um, there are four pages of instructions two of these are front and back the other two are not but there's also a fifth page that lists uh, it has a picture for the, all the steps as you're building it, so you're reading the instructions. Sometimes it's not quite clear. I know the some of the Campbell kits that I've done have been like that, um, where I really would have loved a picture. Um, these guys, they have one, and they're black and white. They're a little fuzzy. They're not high res. It looks like kind of a photocopy type of uh, uh, resolution. A lot of real, you know pixelated dots, but they do give this, and this is really handy. Um, I'd read the instructions and go to this. Uh, very valuable. So, anyway, front and back. Some great instructions. A um, couple of notes about this kit. Uh, number one is it's going to be a Rio Grande Southern kit, and it comes with uh, um, trucks and wheels, and so you can build those, but they're all styrene and they're plastic, and there's not much weight to them. So, um, I'm going to use the wheels as for a wheel and tie car. So I'm going to use the not use the trucks, just use the wheels for that. So I'm going to get Blackstone trucks for this. I'm going to paint this with some Star Brand, um, Denver Rio Grande Western Reddish color, and um, KD couplers, not included. So I got to go get those. And uh, decals, not included, got to get those. So I need paint, trucks, couplers, decals, um, and then whatever cements I decide I want to use as well. So seems like a good project and a fairly inexpensive kit, but when you start adding up all the other pieces, um, it, it does kind of get up there a little bit. So, But that being said, um, we're going to go ahead and get started. So a little background. Uh, this caboose exists at the Colorado Railroad Museum in Golden, Colorado. Um, I have been to the museum. I've taken photos of it and been inside it and sat in the cupola and all that. And you can go on to on site and do all that. Um, but I'm gonna post a few pictures here in a second of that and then I'll start going through the build itself. So let's jump into the photos of the actual caboose next. Uh, you'll notice it has a single window on the sides of the cupola. Front and backs have two windows just like the Denver and Rio Grande Western. Other than that, the caboose is very similar. We're going to paint the all of the uh, handbars and end railings and wheels and um, brake wheels. All that's going to be silver when we're done. We're going for about a 1940 appearance. Uh, arch bar trucks. So when we get the Blackstone trucks, we're going to get the same style trucks as these. So this is my wife being a good sport, standing in for the... Uh, uh, one of the caboose members. Uh, you'll notice that the interior of the caboose is all painted the same type of uh, kind of a light green. 
Uh, the stove area is sheathed in a silver metal to keep the heat away from the wood structure on the outside. Okay, so we are back. Uh, I had a slight little malfunction. <laughs> slight. Uh, motherboard on the computer died, so I had to get a new one and replace it. Swap everything, and we are back in business. So, um, please don't call me for computer problems. <laughs> I hate computer problems. Um, so, we're going to take a look at the parts that are included in the kit, and then we'll get started. All right, here's a quick shot of the pieces to this kit laid out. All cast in black styrene, and then another picture of one of the... Uh, instruction sheets with just the parts list on it. So this kit is going to be built pretty much as the instructions describe. We're doing the Rio Grande Southern, although they give you a panel piece on the side of the cupola if you want to have two windows instead of one and the corresponding window shades for whichever version. So we're not going to use these. These will be spare parts. We're going to use the single window for the Rio Grande Southern. Uh, the parts for the trucks, uh, we have arch bar and the centerpiece and the arch bar ends. We're not going to use these either. We're going to use Blackstone models, um, trucks that are made specifically for the caboose. <coughs> Excuse me. They have these little um, spring sections in between the wheels and that stick out from the arch bars and it's supposed to add a little bit more cushion for the crew. Um, so this is part number Blackstone B370106 arch bar caboose trucks pair red. So we're using those. Um, if you notice in the parts shot there is also some little uh, dummy couplers of uh, mostly cosmetic purposes. Uh, they look good in scale, but if you're not gonna if you're gonna use it then we want the KD couplers. Um, I also mentioned that I'm gonna use the wheels for the wheel and tie car, flat car, maintenance away car down the road. So I took the plastic wheels and I put them on a metal rod and I have four of these now and I had the rod stick out just a little bit past the edge of the wheel, so it looks like a prototype wheel set. And I'm going to use these to put on a maintenance away flat car. So they're going in a Ziploc bag. They're going to be put aside, and that will be a project down the road. I already have a flat car set aside for that, too. So that will look good. Um, other than that, let's get started. We're going to start putting some of these pieces together. We start out gluing the sides of the caboose onto the base and then grab irons onto the roof of the cupola. After that, we build the side of the cupola, the four pieces, and then I use painter's tape to hold the body together while I glued the ends in place. You can use that or rubber bands or clamps, but I tend to like painter's tape sometimes depending on the application. After that, um, there is some grab irons on the body of the end of the caboose. There's also a little doorknob on there too. The grab irons on the sides of the caboose, uh, they recommend that you put a little piece of paper in there so that you can add some spacers. And then we're building out more of the grab irons on the back deck of the caboose. The brake wheel goes on. Be very careful with the brake wheel. I think I broke the brake wheel off at least three times on one of the ends alone. So it is definitely uh, something you want to watch out for. Now we start assembling the uh, beams underneath and the brake cylinder on the bottom side of the platform. Okay, at this point the instructions split based on the equipment that the manufacturer included in the kit. It may be fish line with some grant turnbuckle castings. 
that you would just thread through the car body, cross the queen posts that stick down, and then meet in the center at the uh, at, at a, a turnbuckle. Or you can do it with plastic pieces that they provide. My kid had the plastic pieces, and these are thin plastic rods. They're supposed to go underneath the car body over the queen posts that stick down and then meet in the center in a turnbuckle. The turnbuckle is a casting that you have to drill the center out of. Um, and I tried that for a while, but it was extremely small. And I've got some pretty tiny bits that I have in my pin vise. Um, and I just gave up. So, uh, Tichy, Tichy Train Group, however you pronounce that, has turnbuckles. This is part number 8021. Turnbuckles, they're oops, 24 pieces in HO scale. Uh, this is worth a thousand times the money that they charge. Um, definitely, if you're going to do this kit, get these because what you'll do is you're going to take this turnbuckle and what you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of fine brass wire, run it down through a hole that you're going to drill in the body, through this turnbuckle, and then back up. And then you're going to place that wire to go over the um, queen posts that stick down. So you're basically going to have just kind of a piece of wire that comes through the body and goes down over the queen posts. The turnbuckle is going to be, since it has holes in each end, is going to be just sitting on that piece of wire and then the wire goes back up and then you just position that turnbuckle right in the center um, between the two queen posts that stick down. So I'll show you some pictures and it'll make more sense, but um, this is probably the most frustrating part of the kit. So I would definitely recommend picking up some of these cast turnbuckles, which is why originally the Grant turnbuckles were probably included. And either they didn't have the ability to supply them or didn't want to supply them and came up with a molded plastic alternative. Horrible, horrible. Just get the castings, get a piece of wire, and then you can, when the wire goes up through the body, you can bend them flat and they're not going anywhere. Fish line, thread, I don't have a lot of confidence in that stuff. Brass wire, it's not going anywhere. So definitely a better alternative. So let me show you a couple of pictures of what I'm talking about. It'll make a lot more sense. So the little brown guys on here are the uh, uh, castings for the turnbuckles that are threaded through brass wire. Brass wire just gets drilled up and through the floor and then hold it in place with a two-part epoxy. I just used plastic cement and that worked great, but since they're bent into place, they're not going anywhere anyway. So they make great detail, but they definitely take a lot of extra work. They will make the underside of your uh, caboose look great though. Next, I added the side steps on the um, end platform of the caboose and put the roof on top of the cupola. So the cupola was all one piece. At this point, it's time to start getting the assemblies painted. So the bodies all together, the roof, flat roof sections together, and the cupolas together, and they get the initial shot of paint. Okay, so next, after the body's been painted, and we're happy with that, uh, we need to consider the order that we do things. We don't want to put the acetate windows in now because we're still going to spray it with dull coat. We may do weathering. So we'll do the windows last. Uh, we're going to put the decals on, do any light weathering that we want to do to it, and then uh, the windows with not plastic cement and not uh, super glue, ACC cement. We're going to want to use either uh, two-part epoxy or Walther's Goo. I'm going to use Walther's Goo just because um, I like the way that it goes on. It's uh, pretty pretty durable, but it is a little flexible. So if you push on it, maybe it's not going to crack as if uh, some of the other cements that I may use. So let's go ahead and uh, go through some of the photos of that. 
Okay, before we go any further, we want to make sure everything looks good, and it does. We've got the body and the roof sections. They're both been have been painted. It's time to start applying the decals. We're using the numbers and the um, Rio Grande Southern Sunshine style, and we've got that added. Next, you can see we've got some of the windows put in with lots and lots of glue. Finally, I added a little bit of chalk dust on the roof, made sure that we had space in there for the couplers, and I screwed the trucks into place. Okay, at this point, we are ready to glue the roof on the body, but I got to get some weights, and I just got an email that they are in the mailbox, so I'm going to go grab those, put these in here. And glue this on. Uh, just a note that there's little pieces of wood here on the edges. Let's see if you can see that. These guys right here, all four corners. So when I glue the roof on, I want to kind of clamp these down so that um, the roof doesn't look like it's pulling up or these things don't look like they're hanging down. They're, we want to make sure that there's no gap right there. So we'll glue the roof on real well, but we're going to clamp those four points. Once that's done, we can glue the last piece on because we haven't really talked about these, is these um, ladder sections. Let me see if I can get these so you can see them. These here are going to go on the ends. Now, I haven't painted these because we're going to end up painting these silver the same time we paint all the rest of the handbars and ladders and the stack and everything like that. All that stuff's going to get painted that silver at the same time um, in just like that picture that I showed you in the very beginning of this video. So I'll flash that up real quick and then I'll show you the silver detailing, uh, how it looks on our car. All right, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, I'm Mike McCarvel. This is Fun with Fallen Flags, episode 34. I appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you. Take care.